Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Kuan Li from Tsinghua University. It's my pleasure to present our working paper in this seminar. Uh, the title is uh, The Impact of Fertility Relaxation on Females' Labor Market Outcomes. This paper is co-authored with Sumit Agwa and Yu Qing from National University of Singapore and Jin Wu from Tsinghua University. This finger presents the gender wage gap in China. The gender wage gap was about 27% in 2013. The pattern is also similar in America. Researchers have documented several important factors in explaining gender wage gap, such as motherhood. For example, having a young kid is associated with 16 point long point lower wages for women, but 10 point three long points higher wages for men. So why does motherhood contribute to the gender discrimination? In addition to the reduced labor supply associated with childbearing responsibilities, another one is likely to be discrimination. If employers perceive mothers to be less productive than non-mothers. However, as explicit discrimination is illegal in many countries, most discriminatory actions are hidden uh, in many countries. So it's difficult to identify gender discrimination and estimate the effects on gender wage gap. In this study, we aim to identify gender discrimination using an employer-employee matched administrative data. We use the relaxation of one-child policy in November 2013 as a shock. We also use the salary of new hires as the primary outcome variable which is not easily observed in the experimental sentence. We also studied the number of new hires and job leavers. In this study, we introduced a difference in differences design to study the policy shock, the impact of policy shock on females' labor market outcomes. In our designs, males' labor market outcomes serve as a quarter factor. We also verify the results using the exposure to policy shock within female employees. This finger uh, presents the key results. The graph shows the gender wage gap at each age before and after the policy shock. We can find the gender wage gap significantly increases after the policy shock in the reproductive age cohorts, while it remains unchanged in the other age cohorts. Here are the detailed findings. After the relaxation of one-child policy, we find the salary of female new hires is reduced by about 1.2% compared with the, the new salary of male new hires. It accounts for a 22% of gender wage gap in the sample. We also find employers hires 4.4% fewer female relative to male, and 4.3% of female employees are less willing to quit their jobs. We conduct a series of robust checks in order to rule out those alternative interpretations. And we find that the results are not driven by male new hire salary increase after the policy, nor by labor quality or labor effort decline of female employees. We also document the rich heterogeneity of the results. First, the effect concentrates on childbearing age, age cohorts. Second, the large employers and small employers resp uh, play on different margins. For example, the small employers respond to the policy change by reducing the headquarters of female new hires, while the large employers respond to the policy change by reducing the female headquarters and cutting the salary of female new hires. Uh, third, we also find the effect is largest in the state-owned enterprises, and last, the effect is primarily from the brain industries. The brain industries in include all the service sector, uh, uh, service, uh, service industries, and the public sectors, there, uh, which are more substitutable across gender. Our paper provides the first causal analysis of the relationship between fertility policies and female labor market outcomes. We confirm that policies designed to boost birth rate 
may unintentionally encourage discrimination against female employees. We document that the, the gender wage gap is widened by 22% after the policy shock because of the employer discrimination. Importantly, we find the effect appears immediately after the policy shock, which may precede the birth of the second child. Our paper also speaks directly to a large body of literature on gender discrimination using corresponding studies, job postings, observational data, and administrative data. Our paper contributes to the literature in two ways. First, our study is the first to causally examine the impact of fertility policy change on which discrimination using administrative data. Uh, on the other hand, some studies use correspondence studies to identify discrimination in the labor market. However, they can only follow the callback rate while the salary is missing. In this study, we focus on the salary of new hires. In addition, we also study the number of new hires at the job levers. Okay, can, okay. can I interrupt and just ask a okay. question? And if other people have questions at the point, just uh, maybe raise your hand. Um, so you're calling it discrimination, but um, can't the new rules actually impose real costs on employers? So why is it necessarily discrimination? Uh, I mean, is there evidence that, for instance, the older women at older ages of fertility are, you know, leaving firms at a higher rate after the law so that there are real costs associated with uh, the new policy? Thanks. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, According to the official statistics of our sample city, the, uh, around 30,000 households applied for a second child in, uh, in the first year of the, after the policy. So the, uh, the, 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 uh, the firms have, uh, have lower, the, the, employ, the, employees, the employees would have lower uh, for, uh, pro productivities after the, uh, if, they, uh, if they have a second child. So the firm have real costs. Thank you. Uh, our results are more consistent with uh, uh, statistical discrimination uh, instead of test discrimination. Uh, however, we also need to acknowledge that our results cannot rule out test discrimination. Uh, not, let me go, uh, quickly go over the policy background. One child policy in China was implemented in 1979. Uh, typically, a married couple could have at most one child in urban China. Uh, one child policy uh, has effectively reduced the fertility rate. For example, according to the 2010 population census, China's total fertility rate dropped to 1.18, far below the replacement level. In response to the declining fertility rate, between 1991 and 2011, the 31 provinces gradually allowed families to have two children if both parents were only child. However, such partial relaxation cannot significantly reduce or uh, change the declining fertility rate. So in November 2013, the government announced families have, could have two children if one parent was the only child instead of both parents. The policy adjustment was officially implemented in the first quarter of 2014. Uh, according to the official statistics, about uh, 30,000 couples applied for a second child in, in the first year after the policy shock. As, uh, as a next step of the reform, two-child policy, which allows all families to have two children, uh, was, in, uh, was announced in 2015 and implemented in 2016. In this study, we focus on the relaxation of one-child policy in 2013, instead of the two-child policy in 2016, uh, for two reasons. First, our sample period ranges from 2012 to 2014. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, policy shock in 2013 was officially interpreted as the first step of the reform. So it's reasonable to expect the, uh, the, expect the two-child policy in the near future. Uh, therefore, the relaxation of one-child policy 
in 2013 would be a better policy shock. In this study, we introduced an employer-employee matched data set from an anonymous major city. It's the administrative records from the local housing provident file system. Uh, all full-time employees in urban China are compulsorily required to join the system. For our sample city, we have access to the complete data set of more than 138 million uh, monthly re contribution records covering 5.4 million employees from more than 100,000 employers. Uh, each employee and her employer must contribute 12% of the employee's base salary uh, uh, to the employee's account every month. For the existing employees, the base salary is calculated as the average monthly salary in the last calendar year and is annually adjusted every July. So we can now study the salary of existing employees unless we have data in 2015. However, for the new hires, the system directly adopts the current monthly salary as a base salary. So we can infer the salary of new hires from the deposit records. In addition to salary, for each employee, we have information on age and gender. For each employer, we have information on its sector and industry. We exclude the observations with abnormal attributes. This table presents the sample size after each of our sample trimming procedures. Finally, we have about 72 million employee month level observations from nearly 40,000 employers. Uh, in this study, we, we employ a difference in difference design to study the impact of policy shock on female's labor market outcomes. We aggregate the employee month level data sets to the employer quarter level data sets by gender. Because we want to study the employer discrimination. Uh, Young, <clears throat> can I okay. ask two questions? Um, the first one is, is about the data. Say that, uh, uh, you know, we know this kind of uh, compliance rate is low, especially uh, for non state firms. Do you have a sense, you know, um, what is the average wage inferred from uh, this uh, contribution? Uh, and compare that with, uh, say, we know uh, the average salary in that city. Uh, our Around the 16% of, uh, of, of working population contribute to the system. Yeah. No, I know, but you know, think about uh, uh, Qinghua. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. There are two uh, salary uh, 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 pays, right? So yeah. one pay is from uh, kind of the uh, uh, regular uh, thing, which, uh, which, uh, which contributes to the social security system. And the other part doesn't really contribute to that. So the question is, uh, even if we look at that, I'm guessing, you know, Qinghua doesn't completely uh, comply with this regulation. So yeah. the question is, uh, uh, how big is uh, the gap? To what extent we should think about, you know, this, uh, this contribution uh, on the salary inferred from this contribution as a kind of representative uh, thing, how far away it's from the actual one? And if uh, you're talking about some heterogeneity, does this margin actually affect, uh, you know, the heterogeneous effects you found in the data? Yeah, uh, I know that's a good question. So I can check it. Uh, I can say uh, whether the coverage among uh, different uh, sectors and the, uh, the, the contribution rate uh, difference across uh, different sectors later, right? Am I right? So there's, okay. a, yeah. there's a couple of questions from the chat also about the data. So okay. one question is, can employees contribute more than 12%? So are you sure about this 12% coefficient being the same for everyone? And the other is, um, in like smaller firms, I guess you've excluded the ones less than five employees, but maybe people aren't making these contributions in a lot of smaller firms. 
Yeah, we actually we drop the uh, um, uh, we drop the employers with uh, abnormal uh, with abnormal contribution rates. For example, we drop the uh, uh, employers employees with salary beyond the reasonable rate. For example, the 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 salary might uh, the the deposit records might be beyond the uh, three times of the average wage in the city on the on below the uh, minimum wage wage in the city. So we drop all of the all of those uh, employees. However, some uh, some some employers might uh, have different uh, uh, different uh, contribution rates. So we control for the employer by year fixed effects and the employer by quarter fixed effects. So we uh, I think. Uh, with, with, I think uh, it, it could capture the difference among different uh, employees, employers. We, ca we only compare the, uh, the male and female within employer year, yeah. Uh, another, another question uh, uh, unrelated to the data is, you know, just for curiosity, so before the introduction of this, uh, this, this policy, uh, do you see kind of any evidence saying that uh, uh, wage is uh, wage is uh, higher for for female workers who had already uh, had a child, so that you know they don't have uh, they are kind of constrained, uh, so they will be favorably uh, treated in the labor market. Um, thank you. Uh, we don't have such data. Uh, such, we don't have such information in this, in this data set. But we can check it using the CFPS data. So we, we can check it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, we, define, we define the females as the treatment group and the males as the control group. And we also define the quarters after the fourth quarter of 2013 as the uh, post policy period. So uh, we can compare the outcomes uh, for male and female before and after the policy shock. In this model, alpha J is employer fixed effects, dirt T is year by quarter fixed effects, gamma J T is year, employer by year fixed effects, and the employer by quarter fixed effects. It IT is gender by quarter fixed effects, and standard errors are cluster at employer level. Beta is the parameter of interest. We would expect beta to be negative. If employers uh, put, uh, discriminate against female new hires by offering them lower salaries. Uh, in addition to the salary, we also study the number of new hires and job levers. Both of them are normalized by employer size. The identification assumption is that the three outcomes for female and male share parallel trends before the policy announcement. Uh, now let's define the job levers and the new hires. Uh, suppose there are two employers, A and B. Uh, we can say there are two types, uh, sorry. We, have, uh, we can say there are two types of new hires. Uh, the first one is fresh graduates. For example, the yellow one firstly appears in this data set and the joins employer A in the second quarter. So we define the yellow one as a new hire in the second quarter. The second, the second one is job switchers. Uh, for example, the blue one leaves employer A in the second quarter and joins employer B in the third quarter. So we define the blue one as a job lever in the second quarter and as a new hire in the third quarter. We will make use of the two types of uh, new hires in the following analysis. Uh, this table presents the uh, summary statistics before and after the uh, policy shock. The average monthly salary was about 4,000 yuan in our sample city during sample period. This finger plants, plants the round trends of three outcome variables uh, by quarter. The salary of new hires increases over time. Our average, male new hires have higher salaries than female new hires consistent with the uh, uh, gender wage gap literature. Importantly, the time series for uh, the, the salary time series for male and female share parallel trend before the policy announcement. 
However, after the policy, after the policy shock, female new hires, uh, the salary of female new hires, salary, uh, the salary of female new hires declines relative to the uh, salary of male new hires. We can also find similar pattern for the other two outcome variables. Uh, this table presents the regression results. For each outcome, we have two out specifications. Uh, the first specification, uh, we control for the year by quantum fixed effects and employer fixed effects. In the second specification, we further control for employer by year fixed effects and employer by quantum fixed effects to capture the hiring trend and the seasonality of each employer. We also control for gender by quantum fixed effects to capture the gender specific seasonal trends. In the first two columns, we find the salary of female new hires is reduced by 1.2% compared with the salary of male new hires after the policy shock. It accounts for 22% of gender wage gap in our sample. Uh, the result suggests that employers may anticipate an increase in the fertility among female and uh, discriminate against the female new hires by offering them lower salaries. We also find that employers hire 4.4% fewer female relative to male after the policy shock. Combined with the salary reduction of female new hires, the results suggest that the employers may discriminate against the female job candidates and reduce the female new hires. The results are not likely uh, to be driven by the reduction of female labor force participation. Otherwise, the salary, of, uh, the salary of female new hires should increase. In the last two columns, we find that female, new, uh, female job leavers are reduced by 4.3% relative to male after the policy shock. One possible explanation is that uh, female employees recognize the increasing uh, discrimination in the labor market and are less willing to quit their jobs. We then plot the event study of the three outcome variables using year 2012 as the baseline. For the salary of new hires, we find the coefficients are not significantly different from zero before the policy announcement and it becomes significantly negative after the policy announcement. Importantly, the effect appears immediately after the policy shock, suggesting that our results are not likely to be driven by labor supply changes. We, uh, we can also find similar pattern for the other two outcome variables. These fingers verify the parallel trend assumption of our DID design. Uh, however, uh, in addition to the employer discrimination story, there are three alternative interpretations uh, that may flow our story. First, we observe a decline in the salary of female new hires after the policy shock compared with the salary of male new hires. So it might be driven by an increase in salary of male new hires after the policy change. Uh, second, the salary reduction of female new hires might be driven by labor supply changes instead of employer discrimination. There are two types of labor supply changes. Uh, on the one hand, if the quality of female new hires declines after the policy, the lower salaries may reflect the quality change in female labor supply up, uh, instead of employer discrimination. On the other hand, the salary reduction of female new hires might be driven by the reduction of female labor effort after the policy shock. So we conduct, uh, we conduct a series of robustness checks to rule out those alternative interpretations point by point. We rule out the first alternative interpretation using the event study by gender, controlling for uh, time, flexible time trends before and after the policy shock. We find almost all of the coefficients are significantly negative, suggesting that the, uh, the, salary, of, uh, the salary of females uh, and female new hires and male new hires are reduced after the policy shock. However, the magnitude for female is larger than the magnitude for male, 
suggesting that our results are not likely to be driven by an increase in control group. We wrote out the uh, labor as the further labor quality change story. We conduct some right, in stop for a second. Can you go back to that. I mean, so what's the explanation? Can you go back one slide? So okay. What's, what's the explanation for the the effect on men? Yeah, I, the the coefficients are marginally uh, significant or insignificantly negative. So, the the salary of male new hires. Uh, uh, is reduced or remains similar after the policy. We, we, we investigate the outcomes for male salary before and after the policy shock. We do not uh, compare the, uh, the outcomes of for female and male. We just uh, compare the outcomes before and after the policy within, fem within male or within female. And um, just related, do you have, you have information on the human capital of the employees or any occupation, some, some kind of uh, quality measure of, of the skill of the employment? Because if, if so, then you can just look, you can like look directly at the demand, the supply side explanation that in, since you have the data for the entire city, you can actually look at the average characteristics of new hires in each year for men and women to just see if the people coming into the labor force or leaving are different. Because that's that's not really going to be dealt with by this approach, I mean, in a way. So anyway, those are just a couple of questions. Okay, thank you. That's a very good question. So uh, in this data, we have no information on the occupation or uh, ability or something, or education or something else. So we rule out the labor, labor quality or labor effort channels uh, in the following analysis. Uh, so let's, uh, let me continue. Uh, as Sorry, could I, could I just still go back to your earlier point? I, I don't know why you want to rule out this substitution. I, I would think that's one of the channels you would imagine that, uh, you know, this, 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 thing, this uh, law could be impacting the, the, the factor demand. If you try to, fundamentally you're doing a different diff, you know, there's really, you, you're, you, I don't think it's, that useful that that you are showing the the male not changing because you know if the if if it's really the demand for the male not changing the female is going down then then that then the law is fundamentally changing the labor demand which will be even harder for you to uh, for you to argue from a theoretical point of view rather than saying that just you know the labor demand is relatively stable con condition on the firm but you are you are you will be seeing just the, the just the substitution I I think that. That's not inconsistent with your with your baseline diff and diff. Uh, this is just one way that firm will be responding to that. Um, what I, I I didn't get like what are other ways that that you think you would argue um, to be the to be your main story here. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, we we we, are, uh, we want to we want to uh, verify that. The, the main result, the uh, the primary uh, primary channel is the uh, employer discrimination. Uh, we also we we uh, we, uh, we observe the change in labor quality, but uh, we confirm that uh, the labor quality change uh, do not drive our main results. Instead, the employer discrimination uh, could uh, the the we, after could you could you could you could you describe discrimination more formally? Like what what do you mean by discrimination here? Uh, the, in this paper, the the policy uh, the policy provide a signal for the uh, the uh, this uh, the policy provide a negative signal for the productivity for the uh, females. So the uh, the employers may. Uh, Demand less of them females by offering them lower salaries. Yeah, and but all your all your all your channels going through the fact that the female is going to be less productive. So isn't that na natural that you know the 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 the, the employer what, what do you call discrimination is really just about the less productive and less produced less marginal products for the for the potential employer in expectation, and that's why the employer would respond. Um, by by you know using less of the female labor. 
Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, but we uh, we find the labor's changes uh, labor after controlling for labor quality change, uh, we still find negative impact, and uh, the labor we we still find the labor efforts are uh, not reduced. Uh, uh, we we find the the uh, after the policy shock the uh, labor effort the female labor effort insignificantly increased after the policy shock compared with uh, males. So, but a lot of but a lot of things are but a lot of things are happening dynamically. You know, you 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 would, you 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 are expecting the future labor productivity of females are going down. You're not really thinking about the current one, right? You're thinking about the future. They're actually giving birth to the child. They're creating disruptions uh, from the employer perspective. From your story, it shouldn't reflect in the current one. You know, you would you this is just the expected value. Yeah, yeah, you are right. But but the if. Uh, if the, the results are driven by uh, supply ch supply channel, the effects should uh, should not show up so quickly. In the event study, uh, we can find the effect appears immediately after the policy announcement. So if maybe, it's sorry, sorry. I just uh, wonder maybe you could address this concern by look at age. You have age, right? Yeah, yeah. If if, if you find those are uh, you know close to uh, like uh, childbirth and all those very young also affected, then you know it's not in like uh, productivity. It's more like it's related to very distant expected value, but at least it serves as discrimination, right? As the very young generation, relatively speaking. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the suggestion. Uh, I will show that the the effect is driven by the uh, employ um, uh, by driven by the employees in the reproductive age cohorts. So it's really oh, uh, related to the concern about the fertility of female employees. Then yeah, then Daniel's question is valid in the sense they maybe would be less productive. Then can we call this discrimination? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you can continue. Sorry. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's, let, let's I mean, I, I guess I guess in the discrimination literature, there are two notions. One is taste-based discrimination because you don't like someone someone because of their gender, so that you are paying them less. And I guess the statistical discrimination is that you are paying the expected value. It's just that statistically speaking, the expected value is lower. And I guess that's what how he's labeling statistical discrimination. But I think. Outside of that discrimination literature, I think you can interpret the result as if, due to the change of the law, their expected value or the expected product over however long the time horizon is that they are expected to work for the firm will be lower because they are expected to give birth. That's completely consistent. So I think it's just a labeling and how we are interpreting the label. Yeah, yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I got it, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you for the stress. Uh, let me continue. Uh, uh, as for the labor quality change story, we conduct some individual level analysis. Uh, for those new hires who are job switchers, uh, we can use the salary from the previous employers as a proxy for their quality or abilities. So we first show that the salary reduction of female new hires is driven by uh, job switchers instead of fresh graduates. So we focus on the job switcher subsample. In column three, we find the uh, female new hires have lower salaries than uh, uh, from have lower salaries from the previous employers compared with the male uh, male new hires after the policy shock, suggesting that the female labor quality declines after the policy shock. However, even if we control for the salary from previous employers, the effect is still significantly negative. The magnitude is reduced by 27%. It is likely uh, it is likely attributed to the labor uh, quality change. Uh, it's still possible that uh, employer discrimination may lead to labor quality change. For example, perhaps low quality female employees uh, are more likely to get fired from uh, previous employers and be on the market after the policy shock. So yeah, alternative uh, approach, we extract the full salary records 
uh, for each employee. Uh, and construct a panel data at the employee year level. Uh, after controlling for employee fixed effect, we find the impact, so, sorry, we find the impact is, is still significantly negative, stating that uh, the, salary, uh, the, the salary of uh, female new hires is reduced after the policy shock, even controlling for the uh, labor quality change. We rule out, uh, last we rule out the labor effort change story, although we have no information in labor effort in this data set. We can analyze the impact of fertility relaxation on working hours using our panel data uh, from, CLP, uh, from CLPS for 2010, 2012, and 2014. This data have uh, information on individual daily working hours. So we can compare the daily working hours for males and females before and after the policy shock. In this model, we control for de demographic characteristics, individual fixed effects, and the year fixed effects. The standard errors are clustered at the individual level. We require the, uh, after the sample trimming procedures, we, uh, the fi finally we have a pan balanced panel data containing 902 uh, uh, individuals in three waves on average. About 48% of the respondents are female, and the respondents work 5.7 hours every day. This table presents the regression results. Uh, the, the respondents have either one child or no child in 2012 in panel A, and ha have one child in 2012 in panel B. Uh, the outcome variables are daily working hours in the first two columns. Uh, daily working hours in natural log in the last two columns. Uh, we find almost all of the coefficients are insignificantly positive, suggesting that uh, the policy shock would not significantly reduce female labor effort as thus drive our main results. Uh, we also use different sample trimming procedures and find similar results. Uh, so far, we have ruled out those alternative interpretations. Uh, and we conduct uh, some robustness checks to ensure the validity of our main results. First of all, we provide evidence that lower salary of female new hires after the policy change is related to the concern about the increasing fertility of females. Based on the micro-level data set of 2010 population sensors, we calculate the probability of having a second child in 2010, conditional on having one child in, in 2009, by age and the industry. So using this variation, we can compare, we can, we can investigate the females in an age industry group with a higher probability would have lower salaries after the policy shock. On average, the probability of having a second child is around 1%. Using the individual level analysis, we find the salary reduction is stronger for females who are more likely to have a uh, second child. Uh, in addition, we also replicate the main results using different sample trimming procedures, sample definitions, and uh, specifications, and find similar results. Uh, next, we explore the heterogeneous effect uh, of the relaxation of one-child policy. First, we divide the employees into six age, group, age cohorts. We find that the salary reduction of female new hires is most significant in the age cohorts below 35 years old. Uh, this is consistent with our explanation that the dis employers discriminate against female uh, by off, uh, by, uh, in the reproductive uh, age cohorts by offering them lower salaries. We also find similar results for the number of new hires. Uh, but the salary reduction, but the reduction of job female job leavers exists almost all of the co uh, age cohorts. We also verify the results by plotting the gender wage gap as shown below. We find the gender wage gap significantly increases after the policy shock uh, in the reproductive age cohorts, while it remains unchanged in the other age cohorts. Uh, next, we explore whether the uh, the results are driven by new employers established after the policy shock or by existing employers. 
uh, this table presents the composition change before and after the policy shock. We find the employers, uh, the, uh, the employers appearing only after the policy change are primarily uh, are, are mainly private-owned enterprises with lower female to male employee ratios. So we rerun the analysis in the main results using a balanced panel data. That is, we only use the employers that throughout, uh, swipe throughout the sample period, which are more likely to be large employers. The findings of salary and job, li job level uh, remain similar to the main results. However, we do not find a reduction of female new hires after the policy shock. One possible explanation is that uh, small employers and large employers play on different margins. Specifically, uh, large employers may respond to the policy change by cutting the salary of female new hires, while the small employers may respond to the policy by reducing the headquarters of female new hires. So, uh, in order to ver uh, verify this conjecture, we uh, further explore the heterogeneous effect by employer size. We use the immediate employer size of each year as a cutoff. We find the salary reduction of female new hires is driven by large employers. However, the, uh, the reduction of female new hires is larger for small employers uh, than it's for large employers. We also find the reduction of job levers uh, 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 redu the reduction of female job levers is driven by large employers. Overall, these findings are consistent with our uh, conjecture that uh, small employers respond to policy by reducing the female headcourts, while large employers respond to the policy by reducing the female headcourts and cutting the salary of female new hires. Third, we explore the heterogeneous effect by employer, in the, uh, by employer uh, sector. We find the salary reduction of female new hires is, is driven by state-owned enterprises. One possible explanation is the higher probability of having a second child in SOEs because of the better welfare, welfare packages. Similarly, we also, find, uh, uh, we also find the reduction of female new hires is driven by public sectors and SOEs. And we also find the reduction of female job levers is, strong, is significant for SOEs and POEs. Overall, these findings consistently suggest that uh, the increased discrimination is stronger for SOEs. So can, can I offer a different interpretation? Okay. Uh, just follow up on what Daniel said uh, a moment ago. So think about, uh, uh, think about you are engaging in a long-term uh, wage contract uh, in the state or public sector. So uh, uh, SOEs, you know, uh, are kind of more incentivized to cut wage for new hires. And think about, you know, uh, uh, employees in the, in the private sector, uh, their wage is more flexible. So that's why, you know, uh, uh, small enterprises or private owners do not bother much to bargain with the new hires on, you know, intensive margin. So uh, I think that's uh, that's uh, that's a kind of uh, slightly different interpretation than what you what you gave. And it's kind of nice because it's consistent with at least my prior that you know uh, uh, the public sector offers uh, uh, longer, you know. Uh, uh, or respectable, more respectable wage contract. Yeah, you are right. That's a very good uh, suggestion. And so we, we find that uh, the, uh, the salary, redu salary reduction of female new hires is not significant uh, for public sectors. Because the, uh, the, the salary uh, for in the public sectors uh, are determined by the rank of the position, so it's less flexible. However, we also find the, uh, we've, sorry, we find the, uh, the reduction of female new, new hires is uh, significant uh, in the public sector. So the public, the employers in the public sectors uh, would discriminate against female new hires by cutting the female head costs instead of, cut, uh, instead of cutting the salary. Uh, this is consistent with your suggestion. Okay, uh, let, let's move on. Uh, 
Last, we examine the heterogeneous effect by employer industry. The brown industry contains the primary and secondary industries, which are less substitutable across gender. The brain, uh, we, the brain industry include all service industries and the public sectors, which are more substitutable across gender. So we hypothesize that the, uh, the increased discrimination is stronger in the brain industry because the employers could employ more, uh, more males to substitute for females uh, after the policy shock in the brain industry. As shown in this graph, this, uh, the salary reduction of female new hires is driven by uh, brain industries consistent with our hypothesis. However, the uh, impact on the, uh, the female new hires is significantly positive in the brown industries, uh, and this significantly negative in the brain industries. The findings may result from two reasons. First, the employers matched to the industry characteristics are more likely to be large employers. We have shown that the large employers primarily play on the intensive margin by, by cutting the salary of female new hires instead of, uh, instead of cutting the female headquarters. Uh, on the other hand, the brown industries may substitute the uh, females in the reproductive age cohorts with the females in the other age cohorts. So as the first and the second reason, we confirm that the, the brown industries hire more female in the age cohorts uh, 2012 to 25 and uh, 46 to 50. Uh, last, we also find the reduction of job levers uh, is, uh, is driven by the brain industries. To conclude, in this study, we investigate the impact of the relaxation of venture policy on female's labor market outcomes. We find the discrimination on female after the relax, uh, fertility relaxation Accounts for 22% of gender wage gap in our sample. We also find around 2,000 female employees are less likely to be hired per month, and about 1,000 female employees are less likely to quit their jobs per month. They are the intended consequence of the fertility relaxation policy on females. So policymakers should devote more effort to a non-discriminative labor market when implementing such policies. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, are there any other comments from panelists? Uh, Albert, I have two questions. Sure. Go uh, ahead. Yes. Uh, the first one is you, you emphasize the response from the employer, employer's side. You didn't talk about the response from the employee's side. You think about the right now, suddenly uh, the government allow women to have the second child. Uh, women may choose jobs which are more flexible, have flexible hours, even lower pay, uh, less pressures. They are may, willing to, maybe willing to take a card to switch jobs. So I have a cousin, uh, experienced, uh, have children, uh, children the exact same path. She used to work for uh, auditing firms, very high pressure, uh, high paid. After knowing the policy, she switched to Nong Yuan, Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences take a big cut, but, and then she has summer vacation, a winter break, and then she got the second baby. So I'm not sure whether, if you take this into account, this cannot call this as a, a discrimination. Maybe it's volunteer change, this one. Secondly, your data is mainly driven by the result from the public sector, uh, state SOEs. But we know in, for China as whole, SOEs only account for a small share of employment. Uh, for CIPS data, it showed the effort, no change. I'm wondering if you use average uh, wage data, like you CIPS, have you found an enlarging gender gap after 2013? Just look at the aggregate data to see if there are any uh, widening gap or not. Because as uh, uh, Michael pointed out in the beginning, the data set account for only maybe 15% of the total employees. Maybe there are sample selection problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. Uh, uh, for the first question, I think uh, uh, we have shown that uh, uh, the results are not, are not likely to be driven by the reduction of female labor force participation or female labor effort. 
of because first we we find that if the results are driven by the reduction of female labor force participation, the salary of female new hires should increase. However, we find the salary of female new hires are reduced after the policy shock. Uh, on the other hand, the we find. Uh, we find that uh, after the policy shock, compared with the uh, males, uh, the 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 female new new uh, the female labor effort insignificantly uh, increased after the policy shock. So the so the after the policy the, the policy shock would not significantly reduce the labor effort. Uh, as for the second question, uh, although I cannot provide the the city names, but the uh, in this city the the public sector or the SOEs uh, play a um, play an important role in this city. Yeah, so uh, we can also check we can also check the uh, the the share the share of SOE in this city uh, and uh, add the add the means in our paper. Uh, we can also try uh, try to uh, try to test the effect using the CFPS data, as you suggested. Thank you. Thank you very much.